I'm going to show you how I spin this tea light holder. Okay, so I've got the blank centered in, uh, in the lathe. I've selected the right size chucks for the, uh, the candle cup and the follower block that's slightly smaller that'll let me seat this blank up against the chuck well. Uh, I've also annealed it, which I'll cover in another video, and applied uh, paste wax lubricant to it to make sure that the, uh, the spinning tool doesn't rub up against the metal and dig into it too much. So we're ready to get started. The first thing I'll do is seat the metal well against the chuck to make sure that it can't shift or come off of the lathe while working. So I'm just following the form of the chuck really closely to get it to move the aluminum up against the chuck and then working out with less force to the edge of the metal blank to keep it concentric. And I want to get the metal seated well enough so that when I change follower blocks, it'll still be centered on the chuck and won't get out of alignment. So usually, right at the point where the metal's contacting the chuck is a fair amount of force, and you can see it burnishing or polishing the metal. And then I'm gradually decreasing the amount of force I'm using out to the edge. If I use too much force at the edge, I can wrinkle or collapse the form. And uh, those of you that have done this, uh, don't feel bad. Still happens even to uh, very experienced people like myself. So I think that's well seated on the chuck there. So I'll stop and change follower blocks. The reason that I do this is to uh, better support the piece while I'm applying force to it for the rest of the spinning process. I just have a, uh, a live center in the back there that's threaded for the different size follower blocks. That just locks it in place. Here's a larger size that'll support the bottom of the piece. Replace the piece I'm working on. And make sure everything is tightly supported and locked down. Everything can spin freely and it's still well centered. All right, so I'm just going to spin this down to the chuck a little bit more. It's natural for it to get a little bit out of, uh, out of alignment there when you change it and take it off the lathe and put it back on, but that'll even out quickly. You can see that. So again, a fair amount of force right up against the chuck there. Deep enough for the tea light to sit in there. And remember, I'm going to have to spin a little bit further then I think I'll need in the end, because when you backspin, it'll tend to sort of peel itself back down just a little bit. So I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. This will be spun the other direction and come back down and around. While I still have access, this is a good time to clean that lubricant off of the piece. or even you can polish it depending on the design and the piece that you have. What I do need to do, since I'm gonna be spinning on the other side of the metal, is lubricate the other side of the metal. Resist the temptation to do this while it's spinning. That's an unnecessary risk you don't have to take. So again, regardless of the direction that you're, you're moving the metal, you wanna make sure that you're keeping this outer edge perpendicular to the axis of rotation. That'll support the metal and keep it from wrinkling. Now you could also design other chucks where you flip the piece and continue to uh, spin against the headstock. Uh, in this case, I don't do this day in and day out, so it's easy enough to just spin against the tail sock as long as this is locked down well. And the placement, a lot of people when they're getting started, the placement, ask about the placement of the, the tool rest, the post, everything like that, and there's certainly just 
a lot of experience and art to that decision making. And you can see the metal kind of coming back off the chuck a little bit as I'm working it because of the, the force I'm exerting on it. And we'll be able to refine that shape a little bit later if we want to. You don't have to get super fussy about it, but you do want to make sure that this amount is uh, further down than the candle cup so that it'll be sitting on this rolled edge when it, when it sits on a table. Uh, another good thing to do before you roll edge or anything like that is to uh, trim the edge so it's perfectly concentric. While you're moving the metal around, it's natural for it to get a little bit out of round. Also, uh, trimming the edge kind of softens the metal slightly. It's like half annealing it. Uh, it is a little bit loud, so be sure that you're wearing proper hearing protection. Uh, this tool is just a um, high-speed steel uh, for machining, and you can go in there. You can also use high-quality wood turning tools as well on aluminum. And then you want to go in there and just trim that edge until it's round. does get a little bit noisy. Um, and you'll notice that the metal gets a burr from that trimming operation. And that can be especially sharp on both sides of the metal. So you want to be sure that you remove that burr to have a nice finished edge. You can do that one of two ways. This is a deburring tool. So you can drag it against the edge of the metal. And if the burr isn't too significant, It'll just trim that along. It's a little bit tricky and takes a little bit of experience to get it to not skip against the surface of the metal. Another thing you can do is you can take a metal file and I'll cover filing in another video, but you can just push through and file off that burr. Again, resist the temptation to do this while it's spinning. It may seem faster. You may see that in some other videos, but there's no need to rush. You always want to think safety first and work smart and carefully. Okay, so we're getting close to where I'm going to uh, roll this over. And there's a variety of different ways that the uh, edges of metal are rolled. In this case, what I'm going to do is use uh, specially formed pliers that their uh, uh, noses are bent and both surfaces are polished. So what I can do is I can go in, grab the metal and bend a little bit. That'll crease the metal, which will support it and keep it from wrinkling, but start moving the metal back in on itself uh, without causing it to wrinkle and collapse. So you wanna make sure that um, this tool is well lubricated as well as the metal. So we'll just make extra sure All right, here we go. Supporting the pliers on the tool rest. Going in and grabbing it where I want to start making that bend. And then digging in and slowly bending. There. So that crease in the metal will support it and keep it from collapsing and then lets us work the rest of this metal to sort of bend in on itself. Uh, it's still sticking out a little bit. You could either trim that or go in and keep rolling that in. Um, I like to roll this metal all the way into itself so that it's a nice rounded, comfortable edge for people to use, pick up, and not feel the sharp edge of metal. Again, when you're forming metal, you can see it can get slightly out of round. So before I bend it all the way in, when I no longer have access to it, I'm just going to trim it just slightly. Same way as before. And we're just going to clean that up. See 
if I can get in there. Got a little bit rough in the trimming process, which happens. I'm just turning it by hand a little bit. I do have files dedicated to spinning because they will get a fair amount of pinning into the teeth of the file. So you don't want to use them for finer sort of metal working operations. That'll be good enough just for a quick demo piece here today. And I want to make sure still have the piece lubricated. And then I'm going to be pushing in with the regular spoon tool just to curve this surface in. So I'm going to grab that edge. And you can see how that outer rim that we creased is supporting it while we're pushing on this area to, to curve in. And I want to make sure that it curves all the way in so that when it sits on a table, this rounded edge sits well against that surface. And you want to make sure that there's not any sharp edge that someone would grab that would feel uncomfortable or something like that. So that's, that's good. If you want to check the edge to be sure it has a nice feel to it and everything, make sure you turn off the lathe and turn just by hand a little bit, see what you think of it. That looks pretty good. Now also, because of this rolled edge, the structural integrity of it is preserved. So you can go in if you decide you want to refine the curvature that you have out here, you can go ahead and do that. So just to kind of show you that, there's still some lubricant there. Let's say I decide, oh, I just wanted this curve to be a little smoother. Not a problem. Or you want to be a little bit further down, uh, raising higher up off the table or something like that. So I'm not gonna fuss with it too much just for this quick demo. Uh, Next thing you want to do, I'm just going to polish it up really quickly. I will cover uh, metal finishing and polishing in another video since that's a uh, pretty extensive topic, doing that well. Uh, what I want to do here is just remove the paste wax off of the piece as much as possible. And then I like to polish aluminum with Simichrome. It just gives a nice quick finish and if you haven't um, dug into the piece too significantly. Uh, it should polish it up just fine. So I just apply a little bit of that on the piece. And when you are polishing, make sure that the tool rest is completely out of the way and you don't have anything dangling. It's good to have uh, tightly fitting gloves that might not get caught or anything. And you only, always want to polish underneath the piece. So it's spinning towards you and polishing underneath. So it's a fair amount of friction. It can heat up. Another reason to have gloves. And you'll start seeing a little bit of a sheen happening there. I'm just going to get a little bit more up on that top there. Again, not getting too fussy just because this is a quick demo piece. I think that's looking pretty good. So we'll take it off here and check. See what we think. All right, we got the little candle fitting in there. Sits flatly. Looks really good. So hope you've enjoyed seeing how these little tea light holders are made. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.